Good morning and uh, welcome to today's online service. Today we're going to carry on with our series which we started last week. Uh, excuse me, last week we started our series on money. It's a money series. I'm going to do part two today. Now I've entitled my series, uh, uh, my message for today, Why We Give to God why we give to God. I think it's important to really understand or rehearse, because we might know this, rehearse why do we give to God or do we have to give to God as the people of God. So that is my title for today. Now, giving to God as a Christ follower is one of the rewarding things that you know we can re ever have to do in life. You know, and when we understand and have that revelation of why we need to give to God, it really empowers us to actually please God even more and more. Today, I'm going to look at four reasons why we give to God, or I have four reasons why we give to God, and I think I will be doing two of them today, and the next time I will do the other two. Now, as we are doing the money series, this is really focused on you know, why do we give money or our resources to God for the work of God or for the cause of God? Why do we have to do that? So there are four reasons why I believe that we need to give to God. And uh, the first one is because of God's big picture. We give to God because of his big picture. The second one is we give to God because we love God. The next one is because he's told us to do so, we give to him. And the last one is it's because it's our responsibility as stewards or Christ followers of Christ that we give to God. But today, as I said, we're going to be doing just the first two, which is because of God's big picture and because of our, our love for God. Right, now, since the fall of man, right from, if you follow some of my teachings, you realize that I always try to get us back to the uh, Garden of Eden. And since the fall of man, right from Genesis tells us in the Garden of Eden, you see, one of the things that you realize God has and is trying to do, or has been trying to do, is really to, to get mankind back to himself. In other words, God has a big picture of things which really started from the Garden of Eden and uh, you know it's as though you see God desires or yearn or his heart beats really is for mankind to come back to him so that we get back into relationship with him now his big picture has been and it still is to draw man to himself a closer look at the scriptures of the Bible reveals that God's every move since the uh, Garden of Eden or since the fall of man has been really to push us towards this big picture, to fulfill this big picture, which we'll have a look at it. Now, let's read 1 uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. It says that this is good and pleases God our Savior, verse 4, who wants all people to be saved and to come to the come to the knowledge of the truth. Verse 4 says, So God who wants all people, all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So verse 4 sums up this that God wants all people to be saved. Now so this is God's big picture, that all people, irrespective of their race, color, and creed, irrespective of where they come from, where they are, he wants all people to be saved. Therefore, God, he goes to great lengths to fulfill this mission. Every plan, every move of God is to achieve this objective of his, that all men, as many as who hear his voice, will respond to him, will be saved. And 
That is what I call God's big picture. Now, if we read John chapter 3, verse 16, it even amplifies it better. He says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish. Whoever believes in God, his Son should not perish, but have, you know, everlasting life. So the scripture does not say really that, you know, for God so loved the church. Yes, he does love the church. You know, we are his people. We are his bride and he's going to come for. But in this context, he's saying that for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world, which could also be interpreted for God so loved the unchurched. For God so loved the unsaved world, the sinner, that person who is without Jesus. God so loved them that he gave his son. Because he loved the world, he gave up his one and only son, something that he valued. In other words, he sacrificed his son that we might come to him. We might come to him. So God looked through the future he decided he wanted us. He decided that he wanted the people of the world because once we were without God, so he wanted us. And then, you know, we were dear to him. Then he sacrificed his son to get us. Now, that is God's big picture, that all, many, will come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So, God goes to great lengths to save man. And we can have a look at how it's played out right from the beginning. We can have a look at that. Now you see that God called Abraham. And when God called Abraham, he called Abraham and he used Abraham as a vehicle, as a means, as a tool to then begin to draw people to himself. Uh, Genesis chapter 12 verse 13, put, uh, verse 3 puts it this way. I will bless those who bless you, talking about Abraham, and I will, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people, again, all people of the earth will be blessed through you. So not all people of the earth. Again, God's big picture. He wants to draw all people to himself. Then God from Abraham focuses on the nation Israel. And he focuses on them because they were the descendants of Abraham. And he uses them as the vehicle, as the tool through which he can get the world back to himself. So that through that, his objective of getting people saved will be realized. And, uh, you know, that again is what? The big picture. Why? Because through the nation Israel, Jesus comes on the scene. Jesus comes on the earth and God uses that as a means what to draw people to himself. So when we fast forward to the New Testament, we see that God continues in this quest to really uh, wish that all men, all people, all people will be saved. And what happens there? On that time, Jesus comes, he's crucified, and through Jesus being crucified, the church is born. The church is born. The church is, uh, you know, comes to being. And now God shifts his attention to the church. That through the church, the universal church and the local church in particular, what does he do? He begins to use it as the means, as a tool to then draw people to himself. You see, people, the church, we need to realize that the church then becomes what? The centerpiece, the focal point where God uses us to draw people to God. So it becomes a vital tool. That is why when Paul tried to, you know, kill people who had received Christ, Jesus came to us and said, why are you trying to persecute me? Why are you trying to destroy my church? Why? Because that is the means by which I want to draw people to me. You know, a means by which I want to join. Now, why am I saying all this? Because you see, God has a big picture. 
And God's big picture is what? To ensure that all, many people will be saved. And in doing that, it comes to our turn now. It comes to our turn that we now get placed in the middle of all this currently, our turn now from the New Testament. If you read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, it says this, All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself, to Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, if you also read verse 20 of uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassador, as though God were making his appeal to us. He employed you as Christ on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. So what uh, Paul then is saying that God has given us, he's called us, now we have become his, he's called us, he's partnered with us. Other people call that he's entered into a co-production with us, the church, that we become, uh, you know, part of this drive, this move to reconcile the world, the world back to him. We are now Christ's ambassadors in the same way. Now, because we are in the ministry of reconciliation church, we give to God. We give to this vehicle that God has set in motion so that that yearning desire, that big picture of God, of that all will be saved, is realized. You see, in giving uh, to God towards his agenda of the big pictures, we are participating in that ministry of reconciliation. When we give to God through the means of the church, what is happening is that we are enabling the church to fulfill that mission that God has called us to. We are strengthening the hands of the church to go out there and fulfill and achieve God's dream, God's agenda of bringing many to salvation. Like Abraham, like the Old Testament Israelites, like the New Testament church, we are pushed for, uh, we are pushing forward God's agenda. When we join in to give, you see, when we give to God's, for God's big picture to be fulfilled, is we are buying into God's plan. We are buying into God's heart, uh, plan. It's that we hear God's heartbeat and we are saying that, yes, Lord, let's go on. Let's go on. And then let's get people in to church. Yes, it is a sacrifice. But remember, God first sacrificed his son. So we might be saved. And so we follow his example. So now we join in with God to reach our community, to reach our city to reach our nation and the world at large. Church, when we give our finances, our funds, our money, our resources to God, we are saying that let's go on and let the people come in to what God does. So one of the greatest reasons why we give our money really it's for this big picture of God to be realized so that people will be saved, so that people will come in through the means. It empowers the church to do great things. You know, so when we come to give, let's reflect on this. Let's think about this. Let's remember this, that God has a big picture. He has a bigger picture all, all who will be saved. When we come to give, let's remember this, that this is towards drawing people in so that they too, they too will see 
the light of Christ. It is a good thing to do that. It's a good understanding to actually be able to do that. That when we do that, many will come in and many will come to know Jesus Christ. Their life will be transformed. Their a whole home or a whole family can be transformed because we have bought into God's idea that He desires. His heartbeat is that all people on earth will be saved. So that is the first reason why we give to God. The other, uh, the second reason really is, as I've s- I said before, is because we love God. We give to God because we love Him. Now that is a, a, quite an interesting, a, a very exciting thing to do that we give to God because he, we love Him. We reflect on the great length that he has actually gone to first sacrifice his son for us, to save us from our old ways, our you know eternal uh, destruction. We think about that, and then we come to him. Church, uh, for our for our gratitude and appreciation to God, out of love for his goodness, his mercy, his protection, you go on and on and on. We are willing to give our money, our resources for the cause of God. Now, I want us to recap on the uh, story of the Israelites once again. Uh, you know, the Israelites were in captivity in Egypt for well over 420 years, you know, with no means of escape, no means of freedom. They were in bondage, they were in slavery, life was tough, it was a challenge. They had no rights whatsoever. Then God comes to the scene through uh, his servant Moses. And he sends Moses to deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh with many mega uh, miracles, parted the Red Sea. They went through the Red Sea to the other side, drowned the Egyptian army. And God wrought a mighty, mighty miracle to deliver his people. So they got to the other side and then they started moving forward, you know, to, to, to claim a new life under God's direction. Uh, you know, so when they came out, when they came out under the leadership of Moses, they intended to build a place or a house, let's say a house to, for God to be what we will call, let's say a church a building or a church, a resting place for God, where they could meet together and serve God, thank God, give him the praise for all the things that he's done for his appreciation, his gratitude, his goodness, uh, you know. So so this is what they want to So let's see one of them. They did many of these things, uh, you know, to uh, appreciate God, but I picked up this thing for us to see. So Moses instructed them, and this is, uh, you know, about uh, given and look at what happens next. Exodus 35, 20 to 21. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence. So they went away from Moses after he spoke to them. And let's see what they did next. And everyone who was willing, everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meeting, for all its service, and for the sacred garment. Verse 22 says, All, all, not some, all who were willing, men and women alike, came and they brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Probably they came dancing, being happy, and then, you know, that they could actually give to the work of God. Then 29 said, All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them. What a fascinating, fascinating story. Why? Because these people were so touched by the fact that 
after 420 years, God has finally delivered them. And out of love, out of joy, out of excitement, they decide we want to build a place, a tent of meeting for our, this great God of us so that we can meet, we can rejoice, we can praise him, we can thank him. Church, that is one of the greatest reasons why we give to God. That is one of the greatest reasons. If you read verse 20 to 21, it says, Everyone who was willing, who was whose heart moved them, and who was touched in their heart, came and brought an offering for the work of God, for all its service, and for all that needed to be done. They were willing. That means they did it out of love cheerfully they were not forced they were not coerced not manipulated they were not begged to give they were willing and they were moved by love not emotions but love reflecting on God's goodness they give and they gave to God verse 22 uh, uh, even goes through and said all, again, all who were willing, meaning they gave out of love, out of joy. And look at what they gave. They gave, if you look at it, they gave what? Gold. They gave, you know, precious things to God. To appreciate God. Yes, they gave to what? Moses. But Moses was there representing God. And the Bible said they gave so that the work of God, so that the work of God, so that the work of God can go forward. Church, that is what we're talking about. Why do we give to God? We give to God because we love him, because we appreciate what he's done. They gave willingly because when they remembered where God has taken them from, they had nothing to hold them back, but to appreciate him. Because they reflected and they knew that if it had not been for the Lord, where would they have been? They gave knowing that he had done it. We are where we are. We have what we have. We have the means we have because of God. Yes, you see, verse 29, it sounds as all that the people, Israel came who were willing. They brought free will offering. We're going to touch on that the next time I, I mean it, but free will, that means they gave over and above. Some people call it extravagant offering. They gave without, you know, a, a limitation or without a peg that this is for this or this. They just simply gave. They gave things. All because they believe in the agenda of God. God's work must go on. God's work must proceed and move forward. So today I encourage you on just these two things. Reflect on it. When you are giving, you are giving because of God's big picture and because of God, you love God. Because of your love for God. You know in your house, you know where God, what he has been to you, where he's brought you from, and what he's currently even doing in your life right now. And that motivates you to give. I don't like trying to compel or, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, try to manipulate. No. You need to give, and when you're giving, you give out of your love, out of who you and your relationship to God is. And that must motivate you. But we have that big picture. So that God's agenda and plan on earth will be fulfilled. Today I encourage you, whenever you come to give to God, remember his goodness. Remember where he's picked you from. And reflect on where he's taking you to. The plans he has for you. Remember the, the, the strength he gives you to do whatever you are doing. Remember God's big picture. 
and your love for God. I'm going to end it here. Next time we're going to carry on with the other two. And I, I'm trusting that you get in the picture of why we give our money, our resources to God. We're not giving because someone, you know, wants to spend our money. No, because we give him because we are a people of God, Christ followers, and we want him to be part of our life because we recognize and appreciate. We have life because of him. It's his breath with this in us. And we appreciate him. And we give. God bless you. Let's pray right now. Father, as we heard your word, I pray that, Lord, you help us to remember these things and be doers of your word. I pray that, Lord, you would take us forward and use us. As we give, reveal yourself more and more to us. In Jesus' name. You might be there and then you might say, oh, this thing is new to me. You know, and you want this Jesus I'm talking about, this God I'm talking about, to come into your life. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I've heard your word. I love what I've heard. I really want to be your child. I want you to come into my life and lead me, guide me. I receive Jesus as my Savior. Wash me with his precious blood from today I'm deciding willfully to walk and be your child. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I just pray God be with you and bless you. You can always go on our website and let us know if there's any help you need. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful week.